Okay, pottery people. Let's dive into opening and pulling the walls. This can be pretty challenging, but again, hopefully I'll have some tips that I'm gonna show you now that'll make it a little bit easier. So one thing is you got, one thing is try and have your stool or your chair that you're sitting on close to the wheel so that you're not reaching, your arms aren't outstretched. You want them to be as close to your body as you can get so you don't exhaust yourself. And keep your bucket close to you as well. So just make sure that you're not reaching or, or um, you know, pushing your body more than it needs to. Because throwing is kind of a physical thing to begin with. So we want to give ourselves the best chance of success here. So I'm going to begin... Oh, bucket's a little too close. I'm going to begin with a little water. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm making the hole or the opening that will allow me to have an opening that I can then pull the walls up from. So I like to do like a little pre opening to that because when you put your thumbs here if it's even mounded up a little bit there at all it's easy to like get your hands kind of pushed off or harder to stay on center so I just give myself a little indention so that my thumbs can snuggle down in there nice and easily and not get thrown off center so now I'm going to put my thumbs in and I'm going to go straight down and then take them away that part you need to get done quickly because it's an easy opportunity to knock it off center. So when you're, when you're kind of doing that drill down motion, you definitely don't want to linger in there too long. And the same way when we start to open this. Now, sometimes you're going to see people who go straight down and straight out. And the out part is what I'm going to show you next. But it's a lot of pressure on your thumbs. So I say take them out, give them a little break, and also, you want to take your needle tool and check the depth of your floor that you've created because you might need to go down a little further. So this is what I do. I stick the needle tool in, I put my finger down, and I look to see the thickness of that floor. And what we're going for is about a quarter of an inch. It's the same with the wall thickness. You want about a quarter of an inch. And I'd say that's that's pretty close, what I've got. So I can I can stop going down, and now I can begin to start going out. And if you go all the way down to the bat and you have no floor left, I'll show you how you can, can solve that problem. All is not lost in that scenario. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, it's actually not this, it's this. So my thumbs are gonna give me all of my strength in this next step, all right? If you're doing this, if you're using your whole lower part of your arm and wrists and hands, you're gonna kind of tire yourself out and your thumbs are pretty strong. So it's almost like you're gonna dig with your thumbs to create a flat floor on the bottom of this. And I'll show you what that looks like now. So I'm gonna kind of dig my thumbs in. And if your clay gets a little dry, take a, take a rest, get some more water, add some hydration and keep going. Like Moses parting those waves. <laughs> and then, so how oh, I shouldn't have done that right there. Let me see if I can get it back. So sometimes what you're gonna, what you're going to find here is that you have a curved edge right there. Okay, and that just basically means that you have a little bit of like fatty part right there. So to get rid of that and disperse the clay differently so it can be pulled up into the walls, you're just going to take your finger, keep it nice and flat, and make more of a, a sharp corner down there at the bottom where the wall meets the floor. Now another thing here you, another thing here that I want, that has helped me a lot since I've started doing it, is if ever I'm doing um, a motion with just one hand, I always have my other hand somewhere somehow supporting it because it just gives some extra stability. Um, having my left hand here means that I don't have to keep my right hand suspended and still be applying the pressure that I need to to do the next step. So it's, it's really a nice little trick. Okay, so now I'm gonna compress the floor of my pot, which just means I'm gonna get all the particles nice and snuggled in together. Guys know what compression means, I'm sure, so I don't have to explain that too much. And you can work this, ooh, you can work this from 
the middle out to the edge if you prefer. Either way, it doesn't really matter. So what I mean by that is you could start here and move your fingers out to do your compression. You can do both. It's not really so important how you choose to do that, just that you do it. Compressing the floor helps to prevent cracking, warping, all that kind of stuff. So if you went all the way down to the bat here, well, let's just do that just for funsies. So let's say <laughs> I went a little too far in my opening step and I went all the way down to the bat and now I have a hole in the bottom of my pot. All you need to do, and I say all you need to do, you guys, but you know, the first like 50 times I did this, I didn't do it perfectly. Still don't do it perfectly, but it's another skill to master. But what you can do is you can move some clay from a thicker part of the floor and just move it into that, that hole. If you have a really, really thin floor all the way across, you might not be able to do this, but I don't know, make it a planter, you know? You can always make something work. Or just take it off the wheel, mush it up, and try again. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna clean this up a little bit before we do our very first pull. And what I mean by clean up is we need to get these walls straightened out. So right now we have these two kind of protruding parts and when making a cylinder or any type of pot that you want to go straight up, we don't want those sticking out because the weight there will tend to want to pull out and into more of a bowl shape. So to clean that up, it's just going to be some compression with my sponge. If you're at a point where you're not liking to have the sponge in your hand though, you can just do this with your fingers. So it kind of looks like I'm pulling or doing that first pull movement but I'm really just kind of pushing in on those areas that were sticking out. I'm gonna do a little bit more of that, get these walls nice and straight before I truly begin to pull. And that'll be, that'll be about right, right there. So it's already kind of moving into that cylindrical shape. It's still really short and thick, but we always want to start with our clay going in the direction that we want so we have the best chance of success. So now I'm going to spray with some water. I like to do a spray because it e evenly coats it. Sometimes the sponge you get really wet and dry spots so that's just something I like to do. Okay so for pulling, I'm a right-handed person so my wheel is going counterclockwise and I'm going to do this at four o'clock. With my left hand, I'm going to do what I sometimes call a crab claw. So I'm kind of gonna pinch it between my fingers and thumb here. And then this hand, my right hand, is gonna come in and really it's mostly these two fingers are gonna kind of support under my thumb. So I'm sort of gonna pinch the clay between my fingers like in this position and then move slowly up the wall. I'll show you what that looks like now. You really wanna kind of scoop that clay up out of the bottom because that's where excess likes to hang out. See, I got some height out of it already, but this pot's definitely going to need a second pull, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, I've just finished my first pull, and what I'm seeing is that I still have a little thickness at the bottom, and the walls are a bit thick as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do another pull, and then I'll reevaluate from there. So sometimes when we're first beginning to throw, we get that feeling and that motion that feels so good when you start to feel the clay move up the walls, but you don't stop to think about whether you need to pull again. So this is a good place to, you know, take a little break, evaluate, feel where you might have thicker, thin spots, and then go from there. So I'll do my second pull now. I'm just gonna spray with a little water and get my hands wet again. And it's gonna be the same thing that it was the first time. So I'm kind of crab claw with my left, and then my right hand is gonna kind of support and pinch between those fingers, like kind of like this, and with my thumb. And try to always keep your hands touching. When you get a really tall pot, sometimes you don't have a choice, you have to put your hands in like this. But if you can, keep your hands together or touching in some way that feels comfortable for you, because then they're working more as a unit as a team. Okay, so that felt pretty good. This is one pound of clay, 
And I know that with one pound of clay, I can get a little bit larger. So I'm gonna do one more pull and then that should probably do it. And before I do that, I'm just gonna do what's called collaring. And we're gonna get into this more in video three, but I'm just kind of bringing the pot in so that in this next pull, it doesn't start to flare out too much. So here we go. Now that my walls are starting to get a little bit thin, my pull can be less aggressive. So I'm gonna be more gentle this time than I was when I was really trying to scoop that clay up out of the bottom of the pot. And if you'll notice too, my throwing rings, those are the rings that you're seeing on the exterior of the pot. You want those to be nice and close together because that tells you that you're not skipping over any layers and you're getting it all nice and evenly pulled. Okay, so this is a good stopping point for the pulling section of our um, video series. So I hope this was helpful. And if you have any comments, questions, or feedback, leave them below. And we'll see you on video three.